What Stan Cohen means to the emergence of biotech is, frankly, everything. The first impression of both, especially Stan, was extremely curious, fair, and he had a nice, humane way of interaction. He's a warm, uh, introspective, analytical human being. Part of what made Stan who he is today is his intellectual honesty. When Stanley was a young man, he, uh, he worked, had to work very hard to get through school, and he worked his way through school in part by playing banjo, which is not something you usually think of Stanley doing. Well, when you think about Stan's early thought at one time to be a rabbi, there you have to really understand and deep, delve deeply into primal questions, if you will. And I think that was a natural evolution for Stan, then to go into science and to find out what, what do these things mean? What would happen if we did this? What would it mean to mankind? Uh, one night uh, at, a, at a, a Jewish deli run by two Koreans on Waikiki Beach, Cohen and Boyer and a few of us were sitting there and as the information just flowed back and forth, it was suddenly clear that something was happening and everything came together and Cohen and Boyer saw an experimental way forward to do what people now call recombinant DNA or cloning. You know, the, the Cohen-Boyer patent itself paved the way for the advent of biotechnology as we know it, Genentech, Amgen. These companies would not be what they are today without the simplicity of the experiments, without this simple understanding of something that had been really complicated and, and hard to crack before that. The implication of that philosophically was the genetic system is open, you can begin to explore it, and to many people the genetics of living organisms was sacrosanct. That controversy uh, continued for some time until there was this epical meeting in Asilomar. He was very active very early on in talking to people in Congress and in, in forming meetings. Uh, the famous Asilomar meeting was something that he helped organize with Paul Berg and David Baltimore and others. Uh, that was really a milestone uh, in, in the dialogue between science and, and the public. There were many skeptics at the time. There were many articles at the time that monoclonals will never be drugs. There were skeptics in the pharmaceutical industry that was built around small molecules. This changed the whole playing field. It was basically patenting life. And uh, that had not been done and a lot of people objected to it. The entire industry uh, stands on his shoulder and of course on the shoulders of, of her Boyer as well. Uh, I consider them the, the Neil Armstrong and the Buzz Aldrin of biotechnology, if you will. I mean, they're the first guys. Um, and, and their discovery of how to do recombinant DNA is really the, the essence of everything that's evolved since then. He by nature is a scientist, a continuing scientist, continuing to want to contribute. He really looks at the total picture of the future and the individual and the issues. Stanley does things well and he has great insight, he has great creativity, uh, and of course what you need in a scientist, he has great curiosity.